Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's indeed a great pleasure and privilege for me to, to be invited to share my view on ENDG negative hepatitis, uh, chronic hepatitis B about the nuke therapy. Um, in 30, 35 years ago, the, the majority of chronic hepatitis B were E-antigen positive. At least in Taiwan, at least 32, uh, two thirds of the chronic hepatitis B visiting um, hospital clinic were E-antigen positive. Then after that, we have universal vaccination, we have long-term follow-up, so we know that there are very few new chronic hepatitis B, therefore very few new E-antigen positive patients since late 1980s. And spontaneous e cell conversion may occur over time. Then since 1990, we have therapy-related e cell conversion. And uh, nature history study also show that e antigen negative chronic hepatitis B may develop after e antigen cell conversion, particularly in patients that are converted over age 40. So the landscape of chronic hepatitis B changed a lot. Uh, Professor Locke published a paper in 2002 indicating that e antigen negative hepatitis is primarily in uh, southern European countries. They have a, a medium of 33% E negative. In Asia, only 15, I, I mean the medium. And US and Euro, other Euro countries also 14%. But my recent uh, uh, correction of more than 1,000 patients who were uh, came for the first time, eligible for the first course of uh, therapy. Now it's uh, almost 72% are E-antigen negative. Compared to uh, the same center, biopsy confirmed chronic hepatitis B, 44% in 1987. Uh, uh, so 20, uh, 30 years ago, increased from 44% to 72%. And the age, you can see very obvious difference. The mean, uh, mean age in 1980s is only 34. For, I mean, for the E-antigen negative patients, but now it's 59 years old, medium. And 95% uh, of our patients in these three years were treated with the truth and take away or tenofovir therapy. New therapy is, has many advantages, but the limitation is they can suppress duplication, but not CCC DNA. Therefore, usually if CCC DNA demands you stop treatment, virus may rebound. So therefore, double ASLD and ESO has rec recommended to continue new therapy for lifelong long-term or life, even lifelong or until surface energy loss. And uh, only apostle guidelines because we are, cover a large number of poor countries. So we consider the cost, consider the mutant, uh, mutation, uh, drug resistant issues. We recommend it, you can consider to stop treatment early in year 2000. In the th three versions prior to 2005, we say the optimal duration is unknown, but decision to stop should consider clinical response and severity of the underlying liver diseases. Uh, no doubt, the cost will increase if you continue treatment. This is a very recent uh, publication from Korea you can see in these years, there is a 15 times increase of medical cost, majorly due to the drug. So since the 
availability of entecavir and tenofovir, the, the cost increased even faster, despite the liver death actually has de decreased. Therefore, that means late stage or advanced uh, liver cirrhosis and SCC is, has been decreased, so the cost for this severe liver disease must be, must be uh, decreased. So even though the, the cost is increased to a level that many resource-limited countries cannot afford. Besides drug resistance, which is no more a concern now, and the cost, there are other concerns uh, related to human nature, such as uh, willingness to receive lifelong therapy, uh, a study in Singapore, a rich country, even a rich country, a survey shows that only 44% of the patients willing to receive lifelong therapy if drug is free. But if you have to pay US dollar, $10 per day, only 25% of the patients willing to receive lifelong therapy. For the real world studies in Hong Kong, also a rich region, seven year integrative therapy in 200 patients, 22% and waiting or had financial difficulty to continue therapy. And uh, another study involving uh, six, more than 600 patients for five year and take a year, 83% uh, of, the, of them are Asians. 7% of them self stop or lost to fall up. This is very serious because Loss to follow up means no monitoring after stopping treatment. So the patients may encounter severe relapse and even to a fatal hepatitis failure, like this reported early in 2002 by Dr. Lim. Then, then is the issues of adherence, which was first reported by Professor Locke in uh, two. 2011. After that, adherence issue has attracted much attention. Uh, a review and the meta-analysis in two, uh, 2018 shows that 75% of more than 20,000 patients had poor adherence. Uh, had good ad adherence. That means 25% are non-adherent. A modeling study shows that adherence down to 65% would lead to uh, 2.6 billion additional deaths in 15 years. And a most recent real world study shows that 30% of them, of the patients, had poor adherence. That means less than 90% adherence. And 10% of them, 11% of them have less than 70% adherence. So this poor adherence, patients with poor adherence, increased the risk of SCC and cirrhotic complication for three folds. And for uh, the liver mortality increased 16 folds in cirrhotic patients at, and, and at the dose dependent manner. So this is a very uh, this is, uh, I think the rate is too high, but this published the result. So uh, in early in, because of the concerns of, man, of uh, cost and uh, drug resistance, again, Professor Locke's team reported a small study, two-year lamivudine therapy with HBV DNA and detectable three occasions uh, each greater than three months apart. The relapse rate is on one year, the relapse rate is 50%. And then the follow-up of uh, uh, subsequent two small studies from Asia uh, also show the relapse rate around 50%. And uh, they are all, all of the relapses has no serious complication. Based on this, based on this uh, Asian studies, Apostle Working Party decided to recommend a stopping rule. 
that is undetectable HPV DNA on three occasions, six months, at least six months, each six months apart. That is one year. Uh, different from what uh, used in uh, uh, Professor Locke's study is one year is similar to the one year consolidation after e, e antigen loss in E antigen past patients. Then subsequent studies in Asia show that uh, maybe longer treatment is needed. So in year two, uh, 2012 uh, guidelines, we added new therapy must be greater than two years and uh, undetectable HPV DNA for uh, one year. This is so-called APASO stopping rule. And when we sub uh, recommend this stopping rule, we, we emphasize that monitoring is very important. So the schedule is ALT per month for three months, plus HBV DNA every three months for one year, then ALT HBV DNA every three to six months according to the disease severity. Uh, once ALT is increasing or ALT level greater than two, uh, five times normal, you, you have to follow, uh, monitor ALT, virubin, INR every one to two weeks for the treatment decision. The Western countries started to look at the finite therapy issues, as I believe it's after the publication of a pivotal study of uh, Professor Hazianis in 2012. In this, uh, only a small number of patients after uh, Artefovia trial, they found an off new surface antigen loss rate up to 39% in five years. And uh, two systemic review, systematic review with uh, nearly 2,000 E antigen negative patients each, show that the virological relapse rates about 60 to 70 percent, chronic uh, clinical relapse rates about uh, less than 45, uh, 50 percent, and re treatment rate is less than 40 percent, and uh, decompensation is very rare. Only uh, one showed uh, less than one percent in cirrhotic patients. Patients, one clearly indicates that it's 0.8% in uh, cirrhotic patients. So it's, it's generally said it's uh, quite uh, safe. So uh, compared with the earlier guidelines, ASLD finally accepted this, uh, uh, finite therapy as an option. So in double A, Guidelines say decision to stop nuke therapy requires consideration of risk of biological relapse, the compensation, SCC test, financial burden, medication monitor of uh, monitoring, adherence, resistance, etc., and patient and provider preference. Actually, these reasons are what we consider in APASO guidelines. ESO guidelines also uh, in 2017, discontinuation of new may be considered if HPV suppression greater than three years and guaranteed of new monitoring. But these guidelines, although they accept as an option, but they are not including patients with pre-therapy, cirrhosis, and or hepatic decompensation. But actually, Asian study show that the incidence of hepatic decompensation and SCC after stopping nuke therapy actually were not higher than those continuing uh, nuke therapy. The red circle is from our group. This is uh, in the same study. Those stopping nuke therapy 4% develop hepatic decompensation, but 6% in those who continue. And uh, the other studies say almost at least not higher after stopping nuke therapy. Hepatocellular carcinoma, there are two matched controls. Uh, study also show that 
at least the incidence of SCC after stopping new therapy are not higher than those continuing therapy. So may, maybe uh, ASLD and ESO should consider this data. Uh, the, it, the, the other most important reason is the optimal endpoint, so, surface antigen loss, is rarely achieved during, ENG, uh, during nuclear therapy. Here are three studies. The highest is from Korea, genotype C, more than 5,000 patients during uh, five, uh, six year antegravir therapy. Yearly annual, uh, surface annual loss rate is only 0.33%. And uh, for the tenophobia, seven year tenophobia, only 0.3% in seven years. And in our antecavir tenophobia cohort of more than 1,000 patients, the annual S loss rate is only 0.15%. Very, very low. So after uh, uh, Hajiani's report of very high S antigen loss rate, the subsequent study show consistently that stopping treatment, the S antigen loss rate is high, particularly in European studies, 39% to 16% in one year. But in Asian, studies. Actually, Henry Chang was the first who reported increased surface antigen loss in five-year lamivudin therapy. But he did not stress this point. He just said uh, lower surface antigen level at end of treatment decreased the, the critical relapse rate. So there are major Asian patients only in our group, more than 600 patients, 60 year cumulative surface annual loss rate is only 16%. So maybe the age of infection or different genotype may explain this uh, difference between Caucasian patient and Asian patients. But anyway, all studies of stopping treatment, including the small randomized control study, show that stopping treatment much increased surface antigen loss rate. Um, yes, end of treatment, surface antigen level less than 100 is associated with much higher S antigen loss rate. Five year, 33%. And for those greater than 500, only 3%. And uh, during treatment, surface antigen declined greater than 1 log 10. And end of treatment, less than 100. And uh, sustained response. Relapse not treated are in predictors of S antigen loss. Other studies, including Henry, Henry, uh, Henry Chang, also show that end of treatment Surface antigen less than 100 units has a greater 10, 10 times, more than 10 times increase of surface antigen compared to those greater than 100. If we divided the, the event after stopping treatment, we show that the patient with sustained response as the 60 year accumulated S antigen loss rate increased to 36%. For patients with virological relapse alone, 13%. For clinical relapse, of course, lower, but if the, the patients keep untreated, 19%. For the patients who retreat it, only 1%. So this is uh, consistent with uh, previous studies here. Non-retreated patients, this is first pointed out by Professor Haziani that non retreatment is the strongest factor for S, S antigen loss in their study. But the number is small. In a large number study, 19% uh, versus 1%. And 
Dr. Chen in Kaohsiung also showed 18% versus 0%. The hazard ratios increased to 18.6. Uh, so, seems no doubt that you stop treatment and those who develop clinical relapse, you keep untreated, they have ch increased the chance of S antigen loss. Now, what the, there are immunological studies supporting that effective surface antigen specific CD8 T cells have control, help control the viruses. So that we can, we can explain why you stop treatment and the patient has a higher rate of S antigen positive. So the very important uh, point is if a patient encounter clinical relapse, to treat or not to treat, because not to treat have a benefit of increased surface antigen positive rate. Uh, in not treat, safe, very safe, yeah. but patients can be controlled. So the general indication for for retreatment is similar to that of treatment naive patients in three major guidelines. That is. DNA greater than 2,000, and ALT level greater than two times upper limb normal, and uh, persistent for three months, you can consider treatment. But for patients with uh, hepatitis free is more complex because uh, hepatitis free actually, uh, usually is the result of endogenous immune response, uh, help to kill in the hepatocyte. So, in good size may followed by spontaneous remission, like spontaneous e cell conversion. The poor side is they may deteriorate to become hepatic decompensation. So if patients is had overt hepatic decompensation, of no doubt you have to treat the patient as soon as possible. Some investigators suggest if a patient have a confirmed ALT elevation greater than five to 10 times upper limb normal treat, or patients with signs of impending deterioration like a bilirubin to greater than two milligram, or increasing INR to treat. All these are question mark we don't know. But we, according to our experience in nature history, we, uh, we consider that patients with uh, LT elevation by surface antigen level is decreasing, means very effective endogenous immune response. So such patients may not require retreatment, like the, that in the, the right panel. We consider this is a beneficial or good flare. For those flare with increasing surface antigen, that means that uh, their immune clearance effort is ineffective. Such patients may need immediate treatment. For example, these patients, perhaps we should treat the patient here because at this point, surface antigen is already increasing. So we have, finally, we have to treat, treat them with stink. So by this classification, we retrospectively to review our patients for those with good flare, uh, bad flare, we have uh, more than 288 patients with ALT greater than three, uh, five times upper normal. You can see the response is very good in terms of surface antigen decline. One year decline is uh, uh, greater than one log, and over 75% decline occurred in 69%. Uh, Professor Ch Penn reported that greater than 75% decline in first year has uh, increased uh, chance of surface antigen decrease to less than 100 or increased uh, surface antigen loss rate during five year and take up year uh, therapy. So we think greater than 75% decline is in an uh, important predictors. For but uh, so patients with good flare, but the patients already treated. You can see here, 
when they treat the surface antigen already decrease, you treat them, surface antigen increase instead of decrease. Some of them. This occur in almost 40% of the patient, they have a rebound of surface antigen. We, our speculation is they have a very strong immune response, but interrupted by too early new therapy. So this is uh, for the consideration of Richard. So to summary, I think there is an emerging, an emerging paradigm shift from indefinite long-term or lifelong therapy to finite new therapy because of these considerations and uh, minimize the, the concerns. And more importantly, increase uh, the surface antigen loss rate. And in, the, in addition, I think the, the high S antigen loss rate may, set, may serve as a benchmark for the new, new therapies or new strategies. For new therapies to be practical, they need to have a high surface antigen loss rate like this, like this strategy. Now, but there are, there are still things to be studied, such as the optimal timing to start, to stop, and to restart new therapy. The optimal duration of consolidation to minimize the relapse rate. And uh, we need more study on pathological studies to to, un to understand the underlying mechanism. I, I just thank my patients who uh, trust me for in the past 40 years and have a very good cooperation with me. Our co-authors, we have a superb supporting teams here and the grant, endless grant from Changgeng Memorial Hospital. Thank you very much.